listening to Travel with the Backpacking Housewife podcast. I'm your host, Janice Horton. Welcome to episode three, in which I'd like to discuss travel luggage and whether you like to travel with a backpack or a suitcase. And while you're thinking about the backpack versus suitcase question, I want to quickly share with you my mission for this weekly podcast and for my website at thebackpackinghousewife.com which is to spread the word to all of you out there who are in your midlife or older, those thinking of taking a work sabbatical or an empty nester thinking of taking retirement early, or perhaps you're approaching your full retirement years and looking longingly at your bucket list. I want to encourage and inspire all of you who dream of travel to start planning right now, because I can promise you it's not too late to embrace your travel dreams. I'll also occasionally be posting about travel writing and my books and the romantic places and adventurous experiences that I've had that have inspired my own stories in the hope that I can inspire you too to write about and journal your own experiences. Did I happen to mention that I write romantic adventure novels and that all my books are available on Amazon and that my best-selling backpacking housewife series of books are published by HarperCollins? So back to my question and the subject of this podcast, which is, will you be taking a suitcase on your travels or packing a backpack? If you're unsure, then to help you decide between the dilemma of packing a suitcase or taking a backpack, I want to share with you my own considerable and sometimes painful experiences of battling with baggage as a slightly older person while traveling. Indeed, having travelled around the whole world twice, first with a suitcase and then with a backpack, while in my late 50s and early 60s, I now feel qualified to offer you my honest and tried and tested recommendations so that you won't have to ever suffer the burden, the expense and the consequences of choosing and travelling with the wrong type of luggage. Looking back to when we travelled as a family, taking our two-week annual holiday, we always favoured those soft-sided suitcases without wheels. I recall my husband and I had one big suitcase each, and we had one extra large size one for the kids' stuff. We have three sons, and we usually bought our luggage cheaply from a discount store, and consequently it never lasted from one year to the next. Of course, we'd each have a carry-on bag too for our essential in-flight accessories. To be honest, travelling with three kids in tow and usually flying off somewhere, we always had way more baggage allowance than I ever needed, and so I never even thought to pack light. Although I do remember that it always took some effort to manhandle our luggage into the people carrier and from the car park across to the airport, where we'd have to commandeer a wayward luggage cart usually one with wonky wheels, to get to the check-in, where we could happily rid ourselves of our luggage burden, knowing that the next time we'd see our, our carefully packed stuff, hopefully, would be at our final destination. Our destinations of choice back then were either budget flights to the Canary Islands or package tours to the USA. The kids love beaches and theme parks, and whatever kept the kids happy made us, as parents, very happy too. Fast forward 10 plus years and the kids are doing their own thing and we are empty nesters. We are empty nesters who, and this was seven years ago, at 54 years old, decided to sell everything we owned. House, cars, furniture, everything, so that we could boldly travel the world as adventurous nomads on what would hopefully be a long-term basis. At this point, realising that everything we owned would be transported around the world with us, I decided to rethink how we would carry our luggage, and I decided that this time around we'd need two good quality, extra tough suitcases that would last us for many years of world travel. I did my research online and soon found a travel website putting 10 different branded suitcases through their paces. I was delighted to see this meant dragging them industrially around at an airport and bashing them around on a luggage conveyor belt and even throwing them from a great height off a plane and onto a concrete runway just to see if they'd burst open. Impressed, I invested in two of those declared the outright winner. I bought two large size and hard sided stylish suitcases with wheels by a manufacturer called Delsey 
And I also bought two quality cabin size suitcases and treated myself to a flight sized handbag. At the same time, I also invested in lots of travel savvy accessories, including crossbody wallets to keep our passports and our cash and our credit cards safely on our persons while we travelled. Then, fully equipped and fully packed to the exact weight restrictions of the economy flights that we'd booked, we travelled with our suitcases over the Atlantic to explore the USA, the Caribbean and parts of Central America. Then we headed across the Pacific to visit our son who lives in South Korea, all with our wardrobe-sized suitcases now plastered in souvenir destination stickers. But to be honest, even on their super sturdy wheels, it still felt like really hard work to manoeuvre our large size suitcases when we were travelling so frequently from one destination to the other. And the effort required in getting them onto buses or hauling them in and out of taxis or tuk-tuks was getting all too much for us and we were starting to feel heavily burdened with our baggage. After visiting South Korea, our plan was to complete our trip around the world by returning home, to the UK, to see family and friends for a couple of weeks while we finalised plans for our next trip. And this meant getting some more travel vaccines and acquiring the necessary travel visas for several months of travel in Thailand, Malaysia and the Philippines. This return also gave us the opportunity to rethink our suitcase situation. We'd both come to realise that to travel more easily through Asia, travel that would certainly involve taking flights and buses and various types of boats to our planned destinations, where we'd be expected to carry or drag our own luggage across beaches or dirt tracks or through jungle terrain, we were going to have to travel lighter and with much more flexibility. I suggested abandoning our suitcases and acquiring backpacks. But we weren't entirely sure if they would be up to the job of carrying all our stuff, or convinced that we would be able to carry all our stuff on our backs. We were in our mid-fifties after all, and my husband travelled with an awful lot of scuba diving gear. With all the enthusiasm of my previous research, I investigated the best backpacks for long-term travel and soon settled on some very attractive-looking Highlander outdoor backpacks from Edinburgh. I chose them primarily because I liked the choice of colours and because they had an accessible all-round zip opening, sort of suitcase style rather than single top loading style of a typical trekking backpack. The Highlander backpack also came in different sizes, so they had a larger black one for my husband and a slightly smaller, lovely pink one for me. I also favoured them for being Scottish, as we are quite proudly Scottish ourselves, and the Highlander backpacks had padded straps for shoulder comfort and useful detachable matching day bags too that would replace our current cabin bag suitcases. The backpacks looked to be made of good quality, tough-looking canvas type of fabric with pull-on waterproof covers and with zip-out expandable panels that um, would give us extra room if we needed it. And they looked to be good quality and they looked to be durable. So, with our new backpacks bought, packed, fully expanded, we carried them proudly on our backs and we carried our day bags on our fronts. So we looked like real backpackers as we set off from Edinburgh to Bangkok from where we'd planned to travel across Thailand and then island hop all the way down the Andaman Sea until we reached Malaysia. It was a dream trip. It turned out to be one of the best and the most memorable in all our travels. But our backpacks proved to be far too heavy for us and our poor middle-aged spines soon began to suffer. It was no fault of the backpacks, of course. They just didn't suit us, all our gear and our poor old backs. I love travelling with our Highlander backpacks and our day packs, but I struggled so much to carry mine that sometimes my poor backpacking husband had to carry mine too, and his backpack took all his scuba diving gear, but it didn't really allow him for many clothes, so he tended to carry all his clothes in his day bag, And I'm sure, wearing our backpacks, we must have looked like travelling giant tortoises with our homes on our backs. 
And if you look up the corresponding blog post to this podcast entitled Backpack or Suitcase for the Older Travellers on my website, then you'll see the photos of us carrying our enormous backpacks. And there is also a cute one of me with a giant tortoise from when we went island hopping in the Seychelles, which I hope will be the subject of another destination episode on our podcast very soon. So back to my story about our travel luggage dilemma. I realised I'd made two very expensive mistakes. The first one in buying the large, super sturdy but unyielding suitcases. And secondly, in thinking that we could actually carry everything we owned in backpacks on our backs. Although I'm sure that we would have been perfectly okay for younger backpackers than ourselves. It was clear that we were going to have to find a more comfortable and adaptable and much lighter way to travel that suited us as older travellers in the future. For us, the solution was to get travel bags with wheels and also straps that tucked away but were fully accessible for all those occasions when you want a rolling travel bag to also be a backpack because sometimes you need to keep your hands free for climbing out of long tail boats into knee deep water and while having to walk the entire length of a sandy beach to find your accommodation hut. The backpacks and travel bags that we chose were soft and waterproof and also had a strong retractable handle to pull out when we needed wheels for hurrying along smooth floors in hotels and airports or city pavements and sidewalks. In a wheeled rolling backpack, we knew that we'd found the best of both worlds. So, dear travellers, after travelling for seven years and having explored 56 countries while circumnavigating the whole world twice with our luggage, this middle-aged backpacking housewife and her scuba diver of a backpacking husband heartily and absolutely recommend to you a rolling backpack with wheels. So what and where to look for a rolling backpack? Well, I have five tips to share with you. Number one is material. Well, we found that sturdy and high quality not only added to the price, but also meant heavy when it came to luggage. In a wheeled backpack, you should perhaps look for a compromise in weight and quality of the fabric, the zippers, the pull handle, the frame and the wheels. And make sure it's waterproof or water resistant and robust and tearproof. Number two, comfort. Do the wheels glide? Is the handle the correct height for you? You should check if the stowaway harness and shoulder straps are padded and a comfortable fit. What about the back panel? Often roller backpacks don't offer much in padding for spine protection or back ventilation as regular backpacks do. Number three, size. Consider what you need to carry with you when you travel, so that you can choose the correctly sized dimensions for your purposes and for your travel arrangements. As I said, my husband needed a bigger backpack than me because he had lots of professional dive gear. Backpacks are offered in sizes of litres, so the smaller backpacks are around 35 litres. 45 to 55 litres would be medium sized and suited for most purposes. 60 to 70 litres is definitely large size and extra large is anything over that. And some packs are available as 110 litres and even 130 litres. The larger the backpack, of course, the heavier it will be to carry. Number four, storage space. How easy is it to pack and organise? Is everything accessible or are you going to have to unpack everything again just to find a scarf or your sunscreen? Are there handy internal and external compartments? And are the external ones secure? So number five, where to find the best in rolling backpacks? There are many companies that manufacture and many retails that sell rolling backpacks. It's worth paying a visit to your closest outdoor lifestyle store, I think, and having a browse and trying a few on for size and comfort. On my website at thebackpackinghousewife.com, I have a link that you'll see to my own online store at Amazon. Clicking through the link will take you to a selection of rolling backpacks that I've picked out for you so that you can compare brands and sizes and prices. You can also do this by checking out my corresponding blog post to this podcast on the website, which is entitled Backpack or Suitcase for Older Travellers. 
but I also want you to know that some images and text within my posts and on my sidebar of the website may contain an affiliate link to a product that I would recommend to you. And if you do click through an affiliate link and decide to make a purchase, then I might make a small commission, but at absolutely no additional cost to you. It just helps with the running of my website. And I would thank you for your support. And so back to my original question again. Do you travel with a backpack or a suitcase? Are you a suitcase or a rolling luggage fan? Have I convinced you to be a backpacker yet? Do let me know your backpacking luggage stories and get in touch with me to ask your questions. I'd love to hear from you because my podcasts are totally focused on not only inspiring you to achieve your own travel dreams in your midlife and beyond, but also answering all your travel questions. Email me through my Contact Me page on the website or get in touch with me through my social media channels. I'm on Facebook as The Backpacking Housewife and I'm on Instagram as Janice Horton Writer. And if you're on Twitter, please do tweet me your travel goals and all your travel questions at Janice Horton, J-A-N-I-C-E-H-O-R-T-O-N. And come and travel with me here every week on Travel with the Backpacking Housewife podcast. Subscribe and follow for inspiring and informative new episodes each week in which I'll be discussing ways to plan for and to prioritise travel in our lives and in our new future and in what is set to become a new and golden age of travel.